Hey everybody, this is the final video in the series that Melissa DeCorte and I have been doing on time intelligence. And today what we want to do is focus on a really common question that we see all the time. And the question is, what's the best way to calculate the number of work days between two dates, both including and not including holidays? And there's, there's two reasons we wanted to address this. Um, the first of which is it gets asked literally all the time that I, I did a search recently and saw that on the forum, it had been asked 24 different times in various ways. Um, in addition to the frequency, it's also a perfect summation of the Time Intelligence series to date. It captures most of the elements that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks, creation of a holiday table, the creation of the extended date table, um, editing M to make functions dynamic, use of the dates between function, and kind of a whole series of general concepts that Melissa and I have been talking about throughout this, this series. So one caveat, again, is, is in the past, in order to take full advantage of the functionality that we're going to be talking about today, you're definitely going to need to download and load that extended day table and also create the holiday table from videos one and two in the series. And the links to those are in the comment section below. So the three approaches I want to talk about today are the first is what I call the function that didn't bark in the night. And it's in reference to a famous Sherlock Holmes story where he solves the kidnapping of a racehorse by deducing who did it based on a dog that didn't bark. And the way this is relevant here is particularly for those of you who come from an Excel environment and are relatively new to Power BI, you may be looking at this question thinking, why are we even having this discussion? That wouldn't you just use the net workdays function to calculate this, pop in your, your start date, your end date, and your holiday column and be done with it? And the, the answer is, yeah, that would be great um, if DAX in fact included a net workdays function, which to me is inexplicable that it doesn't. Um, so because it doesn't, um, I think of it as the function that didn't bark in the night. And so we're going to have to work around the fact that it doesn't exist in the DAX lexicon. And so I'm going to talk about a DAX contender for the simplest way to do this based on elements of our extended date table. And then I'm going to talk about a, an approach by Imke Feldman from the BIAccountant.com um, blog. And she, I think, as I, as I state here, I think she wins by knockout on this one, that she has a really simple and elegant approach to this that I want to highlight. Um, it's entirely her, her work and her programming, um, where basically what she did is built a custom network days function that we can invoke right in Power Query and make this really simple. And then what I want to do is just spend a couple of minutes just wrapping up the series just talking about some general themes and kind of where we go from here. So let's uh, let's dive in and get started on calculating those work days between the dates. So let's take a look at the very common scenario for this type of question that we have here. We've got a hundred projects um, that I've anonymized using web scraped names, um, using the techniques from video one on the holiday table and the last video I posted on data anonymization. Um, we've got a start date and an end date for each um, each project. And then what we've done is created a simple days elapsed measure. This is just the the raw number of days between each each of the start and end dates. So just using the date diff function and the day increment, just the, the difference between that start and end date. And if we take a look at the data model, it's again a very simple data model using our extended dates table, a project dimension table, and then our, our fact table, um, including the, the start and end dates and the project ID. Also what I've done here just for comparison purposes is I've calculated in Excel the network days, both including and excluding holidays, just for comparison purposes. And certainly that's one way you could do it. Um, let's assume for the basis of this video that that option isn't available to you, that you're not bringing the data in from Excel, um, and that you want to do it either through through DAX or Power Query. 
So let's first take a look at the at the DAX measures. Um, in this case, I've for simplicity's sake, I've done them as calculated columns. They easily could be done as measures. And whenever you're talking about counting dates, um, a good construct typically is count rows on your dates table and then apply the appropriate filters, which is exactly what we've done here. So we've got count rows on the dates table. And then using that dates between function that we talked about in the date harvesting deep dive to narrow the field between the start and end date um, of that calculation and then applied another filter from the extended date table which is is working day and that's just a simple boolean that is true if it's a work day and false if it's a weekend day and then we've applied the all selected filter here just to take account of the context of our slicers and so if we look at the the version with holidays it's very very similar same same expression same dates between function and then here what we've done in the filter is applied an additional and condition for dates is holiday and so what we want in the in the calculation is dates that are working days and dates that are not holidays so we've applied those those jointly and again with the with the all selected filter here. And so if we take a look at how that compares and drag that into the into the table, what we'll see is as expected that these calculate exactly equivalent to the Excel functions. So the workdays with holidays matches up with the Excel with holidays and the workdays without matches up with the Excel without. So again, exactly what we would expect. And you can see in looking at this DAX that just by formatting it, it makes it really clear what the expression is and then what the three filters we're applying is. So now let's take a look at, a, at another approach um, that makes this calculation even more simple. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this approach comes to us from Imke Feldman's biaccountant.com blog. And I would really highly commend this to you if you're interested in more advanced applications of Power Query, of M, or just in general of Power BI um, applications to financial and accounting issues. Just a ton of great information here. And we'll link to this particular blog entry um, as well as the, the actual M code that she provides. And I've got that copied over here, very similar to how we invoke the extended date table and we'll just go into power query and under source whoop, we'll just grab a new query new blank query advanced editor and we'll just paste that that function in here and we get the green check mark good to go and when we invoke this the first time, it, we're really just initializing it. It doesn't matter what we enter here. So we can just take and enter um, January 1st, 2018, for example, um, and then January 1st, 2020. But it really could be any date. So we're not going to worry about any of these other parameters. We're just going to invoke the function. And we can rename this to network days. Okay, so now we're ready to, to use it for real. We just go to our, our data here, go to add column and invoke custom function. And we're going to call this, let's call it NWD. And in this case, we're, we're, at this point, we're not going to worry about taking holidays out. We're just going to calculate with taking out elapsed workdays. And so we invoke the net workdays function. And what we do is just basically a fill in the template approach. Um, we just set these two columns to the start date and the end date in our fact table. She gives us the option here to change the um, change the start of week 
from Monday to something else. Monday is fine for our purposes, so we're just going to leave that. So we just hit OK. And as you can see, what that does is it just immediately calculates network days equivalent to the Excel network days, leaving holidays in. So the exact same results. And what we can do if we want to take holidays out is leverage our holiday table. And if you recall from the template, it's the third parameter here that is the, the holiday table parameter. So we can take and pull our holiday table in as this parameter. And then it's the, it's the date column in our holiday table. And if we click the check mark here, you'll now see that it's updated this to take the holidays out. And it's exactly equal to Excel network days with no holidays. And we can just rename this, this column network days, no holiday. And we're done. That's all there is to it. So no DAX, you just basically fill in the template hit check mark and you're good to go. So there you have it, two very different, but both very straightforward, what I think of as pretty simple ways to address a very common problem. And that really brings to the conclusion for now our time intelligence series. Um, I wanted to thank my partner in this series, Melissa DeCorte, whom I learned literally new stuff from every day. And uh, has been a wonderful partner in this, in this series. And we've been talking a lot about kind of where we go from here. And if you've got a minute or two, we wanted to just talk about our thoughts on where we want to take our, our video series from this point. And it really brings to mind this, this quote from Miles Davis. And in the Power BI context, we'd say it's not about the DAX you write, it's about the DAX you don't write. And certainly for me, DAX is by far the most interesting part of Power BI. I love working through complex DAX problems. But as I've gotten more and more involved in the other aspects of Power BI, I've really come to appreciate those solutions that take the place of complex DAX in a very simple way, whether that's doing it in Power Query or just applying a simple filter function that we that we did in the Is After Today video, the use of um, custom visuals to simplify things at times. And so really what we wanted to do is to take what some famous chefs refer to as the snout to tail approach um, in Power BI, which is kind of using the whole animal here. Instead of focusing on just a few popular pieces is to really look at the, at the program as a whole and delve into some of the, the less known corners and look at ways in which that can simplify our tasks. So instead of writing a lot of complex DAX, we can apply a different approach that makes that either simple or not necessary at all. And so that's that's generally the approach we want to take from, from this point out. Um, we'd love your input. So either in the in the comments section below or um, in the Enterprise DNA TV portion of the forum. Both are great places to raise questions, raise recommendations for future topics. We've got a lot of ideas of things we want to pursue, but we want to make this as useful as possible for you. So um, if you've gotten something out of this series, um, please throw it a like. Um, and also, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV to pick up um, on all of the future content that we've got coming out. Finally, I did want to close with a brief correction from video number three on the Date Harvest Deep Dive. A really astute viewer named Erwin Schoonderward um, correctly pointed out that in the case that I presented, looking at min versus min x in the date harvest, I talked about min being more efficient. And he correctly pointed out that in the example provided, they're just syntax sugar for each other, and there is no performance difference between the two examples provided. So thanks to everyone for that. Um, it is generally true that you want to be careful in the use of iterative functions with regard to performance, um, but in that case, it, it, it did make no difference. Um, so anyway, look forward to bringing you future videos, and thanks again for watching.